Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Empowered CPA Podcast. I'm your host, Dawn Scott. Today, my guest is the celebrity interior designer. Uh, he has taken Miami by storm. I am thrilled beyond belief that he is joining me today. Um, not only does he style beautiful home spaces for the elite of the world, but he has recently joined the fashion industry. I was blessed beyond belief to be one of the uh, guests at his recent Miami fashion show, which that just that coming out of my mouth is outrageous and I'm so excited. But everybody, please welcome Wade Halleck. Hi there. I mean, Don, that was such a great lead in. I mean, now what am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. So, so thank you very much. I'm thinking about like, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Well, so it's, it's so funny, right? When you lead into anything where you're like, my guest today knows, you know, all these people we see on TV. I mean, I feel little right now, but it's, it's so incredible how many super famous people that you work with, but also how quiet and humble you are about it. So why don't you give a little bit of background about how you started in the interior design space and how you kind of culminated that beautiful life and then we'll move into the the incredible fashion show that we that i attended yeah that dawn started <laughs> when i was a child basically this is you know i'm one of those lucky few that has always always known what they or had a calling right so i mean my dad if he was alive god bless his soul would attest to this he would come home and i'd be I'd rearrange the living room of the, of the house the entire time. He'd be walking into chairs and stuff and just like, God damn it, Wade. I'm like, so as a kid, I was already pushing stuff around or in class daydreaming. I'm like, oh my, what if this building was a condo building and what could I do to it? I mean, that's how far back it goes. So it was always, always, I guess, a passion and a calling. And um, so I started studying, unfortunately, um, when I started studying at Florida State interior design, I mean, it, the, the programs have now changed, of course, right? So, but when I started, um, it was basically, okay, design a room, cut pictures out of a magazine, post them to a board and present them. I'm like, a what? Are we in arts and crafts class or is this college? You know, oh, no. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I was, and, and unfortunately, and I don't want this to feel like it's coming from ego, I felt like even the teachers weren't, they were looking at people's work and I saw things I didn't see and, and it just didn't seem like very, like it was advancing me much in what I was doing. So I also went to um, University of Florida and started studying some architecture. So I had that background as well. And, you know, combining those two, um, I moved after I graduated, I came down to South Florida and um, I started working for, um, let me tell you the whole story, guys. I love oh, it. <laughs> I started working for a uh, furniture showroom and um, that she actually did interior design. And um, we, we were, quote unquote, I have air quotes in the air right now. <laughs> we're designing, we were designing a hotel and the owner was savvy enough to understand and saw that the work was really coming from me and not the owner. So he had approached me on one of the job site visits to start my own business. And he would give me two hotels a year to start for what? three years. Two hotels a year? Yeah. Two hotels by myself. Ooh. And I was just like, yeah. And I'm so, but, F, you know, business ethics, everything went back to my right. employer, explained the situation because I didn't want to steal any work, anything from anybody. I've always been extremely above board and respectful, responsible. And he's like, you should absolutely take this as a great opportunity. Wow. So I did. Um, and that's how I cut my teeth is designing massive all by myself. No crew. Did you even have an assistant? <laughs> Hotel D. No assistant. What? No so, assistant. Yeah. No assistant. I did it all on my own, <sighs> which I loved because I got to learn all the ins and outs of everything, wow. of everything. And then when he really got confident with me um, and saw, you know, the two hotels that did, I designed, he has a huge estate in Palm Beach and I ended up designing his home up there. Um, wow. And everything from there <laughs> has been 
I don't, like you said, I do not talk. There's not much I'm on, on the internet about me, about my clients. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them want the privacy. Right. I don't want to, especially don't think about it. I'm designing your personal space. So you don't want pictures you know, of that in magazines. No, a lot of people don't. And I, and, and I will ask respectfully. And you know, sometimes I don't even ask because I already know ahead of time, you know, it's not going to be an option. Right. Um, but because this is my own projection and thinking because I'm so respectful of that and I respect their space and their privacy, everything has been word of mouth. It's just word of mouth. Word of mouth. And the same thing that happened with the celebrities. I started with, um, when I was working with Cher, you know, <laughs> can we just take um, a moment when I was just one, working with Cher, <laughs> it totally just normal. became, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to drop names here, but so I when I was starting with her and she just saw how I worked and, you know, um, the referrals just started coming in right. from celebrity to celebrity because I keep my nose in the ground. I do my work. I, I don't bother them. Right. Any other level besides doing the work and uh, I get it done and they love they love what I do for them because in what I do and how I approach my design is I study, I ask you for what you, what your ultimate home would look like, not what I'm going to do for you and impose my aesthetic upon you. It's like, okay, what do you want? This is, what is your home going to feel like? What is it? What do you want it to be? So I really study that and that's what I deliver. And that's what people really are drawn to me about um, because I deliver something that's unique for them. I see. Um, and that's what I love that. I love that challenge too. Right. Because it continues to challenge you. It's, I put it this way. I'm not, I know there's other designers out there that kind of, if you look at the portfolio, it looks like if you were an artist, it's the same can- canvas painted over and over and over again, the same palette and the same scene. Mine looks like, I don't know. Van Gogh met Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Does he have a style? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it's all, I mean, I like to do all of it. So, um, and I love that challenge. But if you just have the correct tools, scale, okay, and this is going to read you right into fashion if you want me to go there. I'll, I'll go know, anywhere. Scale, right color, shape, and you understand all that in the history of furniture and how to put things together, you know, you can really approach any design on anything, on any level. And, um, so do you want me to get into yes. fashion or tell me? So where that's how go? fashion was born. Well, the other thing is, is I, uh, I've always, my girlfriends, my friends have always liked the way that I present myself and they're like, Oh God, I need dresses for this. Absolutely. That will you take me out and help me pick out stuff. And again, the same thing I do with interior design. I can look at you and understand your top, your style and your body proportion and scale and pick things out that'll fit. Um, like a story is like, um, I had girlfriends that were getting married and I will just, I'm not gonna, I don't want to throw the bus here, but one of the top, top stylists for one of the top, top music celebrities out there, okay, was shopping for them for their wedding dresses and nothing. And so she calls me and she's like, okay, you know, she's camping us anything. I was in New York. I'm like, okay, give me a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I literally totally walk a normal into hall- time frame for wedding dress shopping, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Totally I walk in, I pick out two dresses, I send pictures. They're like, well, I don't know. I said, they'll, they'll, you know, free return, just buy them. They're perfect for you. Just trust me. We ship them down. That's just, they put them on. They're like, how the, can I say F on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, I, we'll put in the other. Okay. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck did you just do that? They're perfect. They fit me. Per- That's, I don't know. I don't know. It's a talent that was God given that, oh, I mean, you're blessed. That with. I'm just able to do. Yeah. I mean, and I don't, do not take it for granted. I'm, I feel very, very lucky. But so that's always been fun too. So during COVID, oh. when everything was kind of slow and I was like, you know what? Let me take this opportunity to start, like, you know, looking into it, doing a clothing line. And what would that mean? And how would I do it? And and what would it uh, represent? And where would I go? So what I wanted to do and I like to do is, you know, like my interiors is create a moment, you know, create a mood, create something. So I went, as you saw, for the first collection I did, it was red carpet, 
um, cocktail and wedding. So all special moments, right? In somebody's lives. So I just went all out. I shopped for, for fabrics all over the world. Um, had them all brought in. And I took my knowledge of shape, color, texture. You know, I had my inspiration boards of what I wanted to do. You should, oh my God, though. The worst thing is I can't draw. You should see oh, no. my drawings. <laughs> oh my God. If a serial killer could draw, that would be me. <laughs> There oh. is something you're not wonderful at. This is good. Oh my God, I'm horrible at it. I'll show you one day and you'll be like, what? I can't <laughs> even draw stick figures. I can't judge you. Fine. Fine. But um, then I, I got body forms and I was painting the, and it just, it just became a natural flow, just like the interior design does. I just get into this flow that, you know, takes, it takes over and it just, everything just starts coming together and it just becomes this weird high for me. Um, this really weird high. And, um, of course you're super nervous. It's something I've never done. Well, and, and I it was, was, how, what was the final head count? Was it like 450 people? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. bigger than most weddings. Well, at least the ones I attend. Um, <laughs> It was, so let me paint the picture of being a guest in this beautiful, beautiful fashion show. So it's in this incredible building in Miami, the Scottish Reich building. The architecture inside, which I'm sure you picked for this, was just right. mind-blowing. But then what I loved about it was, you know, I've been around enough um, fancy places to know that when I walked in and I smelled a specific smell, I knew that you had picked that out. Right. And I knew. Exactly. Right. So so as an observer, I was like, I know that some people may not notice that, but I knew that you had spent the time to say, I want the person to feel this. And I there was I don't know if it was just me, but I felt like there was some wind in there and there was greenery mm -hmm. and there were trees and there were lights and there were I mean, everyone is dressed to the nines. I honestly could have just watched the guests at this point because the the people who were in attendance were so fabulous and there was champagne and there were toasts. And I honestly still am not sure why I was invited, but it was absolutely <sighs> highlight of my, year. it was phenomenal from the outside. So, you know, congrats. It was unbelievable as a guest. And then, you know, there were these giant trees inside, which I don't know how you got those in there, but <laughs> nice work. God, I would, oh, I mean, like I plan to do those once a year. Oh, that, that big of a man. Oh, yeah. Nice. So then, and, and so like ahead. every year in the same, do you, do you anticipate Miami every, cause this one was in Miami. Do you anticipate, you know, in New York, the mm. LA, what do you think? Well, I've been invited to, um, whew, I've been invited to show uh, at quite a few shows. Um, but you know, um, how I started the brand and exactly how you said it, it's, I took my interior design and I implied a, the set design that you walked into, right? It was my, that's the interior design part of me. I created an atmosphere before the show even started. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So every show is going to be a production like that. So these other shows I'm invited to, I was to New York fashion week. I was invited to Miami uh, swim week and um, to LA but they're just going to give me, you know, a runway. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, without all these other, just, they're just going to change the name and the models walk down. And that's not what my brand is for me. <laughs> it's, it's a whole immersive experience. And I, I can say that's not going to morph into the future, but right now there's so much control over I want it's, as how it's presented. Um, I do have another capsule collection that I'm, um, going to be, which you guys are invited to, um, and, um, you and Steve in September, uh, September, uh, at the W hotel. So, um, it's a capsule collection of a smaller collection. Um, but I really, I want to be known as drawing you into an experience and through the whole entire show, like the lights, the sound, and the fashion, it's just, I want to bring a whole moment for everybody. So thank you for actually, you know, seeing the smell and the sense oh. and the birds chirping and, it was you know, beautiful. that, it, yeah. Just, it so, was, it was beautiful before it even started. And honestly, I sat, guys, I was in the front row. <laughs> 
It was of crazy. Course. It was crazy. Um, and ju- I was dressed to the nine, hair and makeup, like long gown. You did look beautiful. Oh, thanks. I was wearing like five inch heels, so I was taller than most of the men. <laughs> and um, I just, I felt incredible, just absolutely incredible. And I think everyone in the room felt that. I mean, everyone was taking photos. I mean, your social media after must have been just like ping, 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 ping. Um, Crazy, yeah. But one thing that I think that I really respect across all of your your endeavors is that you really stay true to who you are and what you want to provide to your clients. I think it would be easy for you to say and get really excited and be like, oh my gosh, fashion week, I have to go. And oh my gosh, you know, Miami swim, I have to do all these things. But really, you're staying very true to where you are in your brand today and what you want to deliver. And I think that's hard for a lot of people to to accomplish. I, I just think I'm lucky, Dom, because I have an established your design. So this is a passion. And I understand a lot of people make decisions based on the business aspect of getting the brand out there and, you know, of getting more exposure. Um, but I'm lucky enough to have been this, you know, 20 years of this, of interior design. I have a lot of people I know, a lot of contacts, you know, before my brand was even launched, I had two covers of Bazaar. I know. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to be shown in Vogue. So a lot of other things have happened without, you know, just with relationships. I, it's just, I feel blessed. It's just relationships and, and they're not going to put it in there if they don't think it's great Absolutely. either. So, um, um, and I just want to maintain that control and the, the amount of work that just came, I was overwhelmed by the response because again, it was passion. It was fun. It was like, okay, let me do this. But then how it blew up after I was just not really kind of prepared for either. Um, so, I mean, I'm making, uh, doing everything I'm doing right now. People have bought off the rack. You know, the, I mean, that was, those are model sizes. How many people are really truly model sizes? Those were very right? little people. <laughs> like, Amazonian. Very tall, I mean, the girls very are, small people. <laughs> Don, I'm in the back and they're putting their, their elbows on my shoulders to put their shoes on. I'm like, am I, am I, am I a hobbit right now? <laughs> I mean, what is this? They were but, stunning. I mean, yeah. The models and they were, were such a pleasure. Stunning. And they were fun. And there was an after party guys. That was great. Um, and they were just, they, you could tell they were so happy with what they were wearing because they had some of their friends showed up and there were pictures all over their personal social and, and they, they chose to stay in the outfits for the after party, which I thought was incredible. And you could tell it was just, it was a wonderful experience for everyone. And I think that passion of yours really, really showed through. And that's why I think a lot of you know, especially the elite are asking you for them to design, you know, for you to design for them because you can feel the passion in your work and the colors and the cuts are fabulous. That is, I, I'm very much attuned to women's proportions and shapes. And and now when they come in, I'm doing custom wedding dresses and stuff like that. You know, um, it again, it comes to scale and proportion and how I play with the fabric and the pattern that fits on the body. And the one thing I love is how everybody says how empowered and how beautiful and it's constant across the board. And it, it I just, I guess the words feel, feel so humbled. And I still like kind of so shy about it, just how beautiful they feel when they put my stuff on. I mean, and that's been the constant comment and it just makes me feel, I, I don't know. It makes me feel, I don't know how to describe that. Like you're doing Humble, what you're meant to this be is not, doing. I, I never studied this and I was really afraid of doing it. And I watched a lot of documentaries on the top designers and what they do and how they, they were doing, because I felt almost a part of me was like, I'm an imposter. Who the hell am I to try and do something like this? You know, after these people study and take years and, you know, go to school and here I am just like, okay, Hey, I'm going to do this. <laughs> You well, know? you're you're I'm... killing it. Let's let's <laughs> let's announce that to the world. I mean, if, it was just it it was it was funny because it was cohesive. You could tell it was all part of one show, right? But it everybody was every every gown or you know there were some pantsuits that were amazing. 
Um, every single one had such a, a story to it. And I could tell that there was a moment where you were designing it, where something was inspiring you to, you know, yeah. make the, the cape. The one that comes to mind is there was this beautiful, long hooded cape and the model was gorgeous. And she was the perfect fit for that outfit. And I just, I remember like being taken back and just like holding my breath because it was, it was so beautiful. And it's not something that I would ever imagine myself in, but it was perfect for her. Good call on that. That's going to be on the next cover of Bizarre, by the way. Oh, God. it should be. <laughs> I mean, it was. Yeah, that, that one, that piece. It yeah. was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. And like I said, like that is not something that I could see myself in, but I think that there were, for everything that I was like, oh my gosh, that's beautiful on her. There were things that I was like, oh my God, I would absolutely wear that if it were like several sizes larger. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, yeah. you could just tell how your confidence relayed into the model's confidence. And the women, I was watching the the women in the audience and you could tell they were like, oh my gosh, like I need that in my life or I could wear this to that. And and so they were creating their own experiences from this experience that you had created. And and so I'm excited that so many people are reaching out for, you know, kind of one-off pieces. I am, I continue to just, just to be overwhelmed and humbled and just keep my, I, I, I am continued to, I don't know. I just, I, I love it. My, I made a, thought I made a dress for a, um, a friend who went to the Beckham wedding okay. um, in Palm Beach, Perfect. Victoria Beckham's son. Okay. Um, I custom dressed for her and she looked, it's, I did it in bright colors. I did it what, you know, I knew her, I knew what she liked and I did this beautiful silk chiffon um, and silk crepe dress for her. Um, she looked like this modern Greek goddess. I mean, I think she looks stunning and they took the phones at the wedding, took the phones from everybody. So right. no pictures, no communication. She called me the next day. She's like, Tommy Hilfiger walked up to ask her what she was wearing. Victoria wow. Beckham walked up to her, asked what she was wearing. Rachel Zoe walked up to her, asked her what she was wearing. I'm like, are you, you're <laughs> kidding me, right? You're kidding me. She's oh. like, no way. People were walking up and asking me, who the hell is this? Who, what is this? I'm like, <gasps> okay, I feel like. I, at least I'm doing something right. And they're not saying, Oh my God, you're a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never seen you as a train wreck ever in all of our years of experience together. Wait a minute. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. There was one that we made. <laughs> no, but you looked fabulous. <laughs> a few bottles of wine. That's our jam, we were a little bit of train wreck there. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> but even still you're, it's funny. Cause every time I'm like, Oh, Wade's going to come over and, and I know what follows, right? We, we, we eat and we drink and we have the best time, but you are always immaculately dressed. I'm like, Oh, I have to change out of my <laughs> leggings and my tank top that I'm wearing because, Oh my gosh, Wade's coming out, you know? And, and, but always just effortlessly impeccable effort. I mean, thank you outwardly. I think it's effortlessly. I'm sure that that's not what really happens, but it's just, it's so, it's been so much fun to watch a, you build these brands and, and really be discreet. I actually didn't realize you worked with Cher, even after all of our years and all the wine I've put into you. Um, uh -huh. Because you are so <laughs> quiet about your your clients, and I I respect the heck out of that because it's something that in my profession I have to be really really quiet um, about who right. I work with, and so it's just really nice to see that you could really take advantage of your connections and who you're working with to really propel you into a different stratosphere, or you know get yourself publicity. And I just I think it's really admirable that you are you're quiet. Um, your quiet demeanor is yeah, I, propelling you. I don't want to uh, springboard it off of their limelight. It's what they've achieved and it's, that's their thing. If I'm going to be acknowledged, I want to be acknowledged for my work, not necessarily who I'm working for um, and the quality of what I've done. And it, it, it works. I mean, they, they love what I do. So they refer me and what else could I ask for? Why do I need to expose right. I want to, and I, and I don't need to define myself that way either. You know, I don't want to define myself, but, but an artist, interior design and now kind of fashion design. And I'm very thankful for the clients that I have 100%. I adore them, but I'm not going to use them for my advantage in that way. 
it's not going to do it. I just think that's, and it's hard, I think, to, to maintain that, especially over the years and, and really stay true to what you're trying to do, because it is easy to be like, oh, I could, if I were to say this on this platform, then, you know, I'd probably get X, Y, and Z. But I think that you've identified that that would hurt you on the backside of that. Right. And it's just, yeah, I, it's hard. These people, if you, if you think about the celebrities and also I work with, um, you know, some of the, the, the wealthiest wealthy people that I work with, they're exposed all the time and used all the right. time. Absolutely. And, um, that's something they earned and gained on their own. It's not thing for me to exploit for my own benefit. So, you know, I just, I look at it that way. I respect what they did for themselves and that's where it needs to end. That's just, wonderful. you know, and that's probably not yeah. common for them either. I, I would say that more likely more often than not, people don't share that sediment. Um, you know, what you're saying right there is, I mean, imagine when I work with these people and I work with their, their management teams and I work with their personal assistants and I work with the crew that's around all these people and there, that is a feedback that they, they're just like, you are definitely different because you don't exploit or try to exploit, you know, the client in any way. You just kind of keep your head down and do your business. I'm like, well, that's, my job. that's just who I am. And, and, <laughs> and there's, it's, I'm not, I'm not about to do that to them. You know, that's not the, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to give them a beautiful home. That's my purpose. Right. Right. What do you, what do you think your most, is there like a moment where, you know, you were out on your own for a while and things were going well? Is there a moment where you kind of sat back and you acknowledged how far you'd come and really internally thought maybe like, oh my gosh, I've, I've done it or I'm so happy or like, like just a, a moment of, I, I look at what I've accomplished just daily. There, daily you know, I struggled with that because what, I mean, that's a good question because there was a point where I was working with quite a few celebrities at once. And I'm like, oh, this could be, this is a, a true conversation I have with myself on the flight to LA. I'm like, this could be like the pinnacle defining moment in my career. I'm like, but I don't want to define it on this. I don't want to define it because it's celebrities I'm working for. Um, and it's exciting, but I don't want that to be a defining, a defining moment for me. And yeah, I was very happy and proud and lucky of the clients that I had. Um, but I think, and I'll honestly tell you, this is honest answer. My defining moments are when the client walks in and cries mm -hmm. and they love their apartment or, they, or their home. And they call me months later and say still how much they love it. That is my defining moments because I'm giving them an environment that that is their home and that they absolutely love. That, those are my defining moments. And that's how can, and are now with the fashion when they put it on, they're like, Oh my God, this, I feel so beautiful in this and everything. Those are my moments and those are continued little moments. And that's how I just keep going forward with it instead of just giving one. Cause if you reach a, a pinnacle, you're, you're just going to go down the other side. Right. right. So want to just continue to join, keep <laughs> hopping from one moment to the next, to the next, to the next, you know, because who knows? Maybe there's no other celebrities ever will come again. Maybe not. And again, I don't want to define it that way. I just want to define it by, the quality of my work and the, you know, my clients reactions. And that's how it's been. That's how I'll continue to operate. It makes me feel wonderful that way. And right now I'm designing a wedding dress for this wonderful, lovely woman. And, you know, she had bought, <laughs> Oh my God, she had bought this dress and she brought it in and it's, I, mean, I cannot, I don't want to say the person's the brand and it was very expensive and she put it on and I was like, I mean, she saw my face went, went white and I was like, she goes, I know oh, she was, I, and she goes, I saw it in an ad. I didn't have time. And I just bought it. And, and of course it was styled and the, it was a model. She's size two. She's not a size two, you know, she's a larger size. And I was just like, she's like, can you help me? <laughs> I'm like, of course I can. So she returned the dress. She came back and I designed a whole new dress and she put it on. This has just happened yesterday. She put the base of it. It's all together. And she glue. She was like, this smile came over her. That's a defining moment for me. Absolutely. I delivered something. Yeah, those are defining moments for me. That's what I just kind of live for. So, But that moment will also be with her for the rest of her life because she's yeah. going to wear that on 
one of the most important days of her life and she'll remember you forever. Yeah, I'm actually doing six dresses for that day. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, then six times over, she's going to remember you. Six times over. Six dresses? <laughs> why, why six. She does all these changes, and it's a whole big thing. And each one that she was trying to get, she loves that. Everything is unique. Nobody nobody has it. It's all fit to her. I worked with her body. I love and that. Yeah, it's, I mean, I just continue to be inspired and continue to be just in love with what I'm doing. I mean, I just... Don, I love it. I love it. I can't I wait to. Uh, I can't wait to do your girls' dresses when they're. It's oh my time. gosh, my girls would. So, <laughs> so just so everyone's aware, I I told my girls that I was I was chatting with you. I told you this before we started, and my little one brought out a magazine that was just delivered in the mail, and it has you on the cover and a whole spread. And she was like, "Mommy, I need to go with you to make sure you capture everything about Mr. Wade." And um, he looks so fancy and he looks so handsome on this cover. And I just, I need to be there because I, you just need me. I, you can't go without me. And I was like, well, honey, you can't go. And she's like, she like ponders for a second. She's like, well, fine. Tell him he needs to come over and hang out. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, you know, and, but I, like the thought of you designing my girl's wedding dresses is like, oh. So much fun. So much Eight years fun. away. When we're, oh, we're, don't, don't, years. Don't, Steve, Steve, I'm not rushing anything here. Okay. Steve. Years <laughs> away and probably some, <laughs> some abuse or some, some partners between now and then. But, uh, yeah, right. It just, it's incredible. I just, I love hearing that you have designed and built a, uh, life for yourself around something that you love every day. I mean, listen, there's probably days, but every day is just, you know, every time we talk about what you're doing, you can see the passion. And I think that so many people are working towards that and either are afraid to start or don't know where to start. And so just being someone that they can look to and say, well, he did it. Why can't I? You know, Don, that's exactly what I told my brother and, you know, his kids, my nieces and nephews mm -hmm. is I told Blake that I another reason I'm doing this is to show the kids is take a chance Absolutely. bet on yourself go out there and step if I fall and I I fall and, and found my face I at least I tried and not living hey what if what if I did try and it did succeed it's not a what if it's like I took that chance mm -hmm. I did everything I did to make sure that it was what I wanted it to be and if it failed it failed but I went out there and I did it and I really want, I want the people around me, the kids, I mean, your kids, anybody to see that, you know, just take that, you know, be smart about it. <laughs> take all the right Have steps, some savings. You know, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and go out there and, and take a chance. If awesome. it's a passion, take a chance. Don't live with that kind of, what if I had done that? I mean, that's the last thing I want to live with. Right. You the know, regret it's of, the last oh, thing. I, I was too scared to start. I mean, how many people are right. too scared? So many people. I know. But then they're living with that. What if I have encouraged personally on my friendship side, three or four of them so afraid to step on their own, like, just do it. Just step out. Just try it. You can always go back if it doesn't work. And they all stepped out and it all worked for them. And you just, you know, just some people need that nudge. It is fearful. Absolutely. It's 100% pure fearful. Well, you put yourself out there. I mean, when I started this podcast, even people are like, Don, what are you doing? Like it could be so much fun, and they're like, it could also be really dumb. <laughs> like, oh, you have such a great, <laughs> but I know you had such a great speaking voice. Uh, well, it's because usually I've had some wine, and it's a little more uh, slurred together. Oh yeah, get a little draw. <laughs> a little draw. Mm -hmm. I, I scooch down in my chair a little bit. I get real like warm, and and candidly, I'm actually, I'm you know this, I'm pretty introverted. So generally, I when I'm around, especially more than one or two people, I'm a listener. I don't. I don't generally say very much. I make sure everyone's wine is full and their bellies are full. Uh, that's my love language. Oh, no, no, no. When I'm with you, I'm the listener because I'm stuffing my face full of that damn <laughs> food that you make that is just like, oh, my God, you it's guys. Love. Not had her cooking. Oh, my God. This girl needs to open a restaurant, a oh. bakery. I want a bed and she breakfast. Kills me. Could you imagine if oh. I owned a bed and breakfast? <laughs> yes, because I have a permanent room there. <laughs> <laughs> Most people would need a permanent room. It's. You know, everyone I think has their way of showing love and that, that is certainly mine. If I can share something that warms your, your soul, that, that to me is me showing you love and, and knowing that people are comfortable in my home and they're comfortable 
you know, your, your brother Blake had, we have a fire pit out back and, um, there's a, there's a seat that is his and you can tell it's his because he nestles down in the, in the chair and his feet make this little indent because he doesn't move all night. He just stays there and he just, you know, lives his best life out there. And, and that's how I've identified that I, I show love to people is, is ensuring that that part of them, no matter what's going on around them, that, you know, you're safe here. And this is, this is a place. Oh yeah. You know, your home is great and oh, it's special when you bring out the sourdough grilled cheese with tomato soup it's like i've gone yeah died and gone to heaven yeah i'm like oh. it's a commitment it's a commitment <laughs> <laughs> like are you committing to staying here the rest of the night because if you start here this is this is where you're gonna end yeah that's yeah it's just you don't move that's for sure <laughs> we'll work on that ben Bre- you can design it Ooh, that's a fun idea oh my god how fun would that be huh yeah you would really kill it with that by the way i think so i think so We'll, really we'll talk killing. offline about this. This sounds like Steve, Steve will be so excited. <laughs> we'll make Blake. Oh my, he would build everything. Are you kidding? I know. Joe Builder there. I know. Him and Blake can build everything. That'll be great. Oh Unlike me, I mean. We'll just direct I, I just, everybody. I think, exactly. I can't even pick up a screwdriver and understand which end to use anymore. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we, we all have our skills and what we bring to the table. And it's important to identify That's those. True. So there, there you go. <laughs> Well, this has been so much fun. I, I love every second we spend together and I'll absolutely tell my little one that you're coming over because otherwise she'll kill me. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but thank you so much. And I can't wait to keep everyone updated about how your fashion brand is spreading and how it's just touching more lives, but in you know a way that, that keeps to you and keeps true to what you're trying to build and I just, again, I'm so glad you spent this morning with me and thank you. Just thank you. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. And yeah, and uh, we'll see you Sunday. Absolutely. I'll have bread. <laughs> oh, uh, you're killing me. Uh, you know, I'll be dreaming about that sourdough <laughs> until then. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else you enjoy your shows. 